What's up you guys? Welcome back to the Average Joe on Money Financial Channel and in this video we are talking about Vanguard index funds. Woohoo! I feel like it's been forever since I've done that but today we're talking Vanguard index funds and a number of months ago we talked about the top Vanguard index funds outperforming the S&P 500. But a lot has changed since then, especially with COVID-19 happening. So I wanted to give you a quick update here on Vanguard index funds, which ones are outperforming the S&P 500. And in this video, I will reference both Vanguard's exchange traded funds as well as their indexed mutual funds. Though in some cases, there might not be an indexed mutual fund to match the Vanguard ETF. You guys know I hate long and drawn out BS videos. So I'm not gonna waste your time. I'm not gonna clickbait you. We're gonna deliver on the content in the title. Let's go ahead and jump in front of my uh, computer screen and look at the actual data. All right, guys, we're here on my computer screen and we're going to take a look here at the Vanguard website. Now, first thing we need to understand is if we're talking about beating the S&P 500, we need to understand fundamentally how is the S&P 500 doing. Let's go ahead and look here on the website. The simplest way to do this is to just take a look at Vanguard's own S&P 500 index fund, which is Vanguard's VFIAX, that is their indexed mutual fund. And then of course they have their ETF component, which is VOO. In this case, the investment results are exactly the same. As we can see here, the S&P 500 index fund is up 4.1%. And we can also take a look at the Vanguard total stock market index fund as well, which is VTSAX and VTI for the ETF component. And you can see the, the results here are just about the same, 4.27% year to date. So that's the standard. What is beating the S&P 500 or the total stock market fund index year to date? So if we do this sorting by the best performing Vanguard index funds, we can see here from an index mutual fund perspective, we'll look at ETFs in a second, but for an index mutual fund perspective, the top performing mutual fund is the Vanguard US Growth Fund, which has a pretty high expense ratio and that has a return though of 32.64%. We also have the Growth Index Admiral Shares, which has returned year to date 21.49%. We can see that right here. And that only has an expense ratio of 0.05%. But both of these funds year to date are beating the S&P 500. And then further down here, we've got the Diversified Equity Fund, which is a 0.35% expense ratio. And then the returns here from like the Large Cap Index Admiral Shares, VLCAX, and the Tax Managed Capital Appreciation Admiral Shares, and they're just kind of just barely beating the S&P 500. If we look a little bit deeper into this top performing fund, the Vanguard Growth Index Fund, which is actually the second one had the lower expense ratio, we see here, if we look at the portfolio, we've got a a top 10 um, holdings that looks very similar to the S&P 500, just a little bit higher weighted. We see here the top holdings look just like the S&P 500 in the total stock market. We've got Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, um, Google, Facebook, Tesla, Visa. It looks just like a heavily weighted large cap index. And you can see here the top 10 holdings represent 48.2% of the total assets in this fund. You can actually go in further and look at the actual top 10 holdings by weighting. It gives you a little more screen here. 11.4% in Apple. And Microsoft is 9.7%. Google, excuse me, Amazon at 8.3%. Um, Google at 54 Facebook at 4%. It's definitely weighted towards growth stocks. So from a large cap perspective, we've got just the U.S. growth with that high expense ratio, growth index admiral shares, and diversified equity that are really actually truly beating the S&P 500 so far year to date. But if we scroll down here, we can take a look at the mid cap. And we've only got just the one here, well, two actually. We've got the mid cap growth index admiral shares, VMGMX, and the mid cap growth, which has a high expense ratio at 0.36% VMGRX. And if we click into the mid cap growth index, again, where there's that keyword growth. Growth seems to be the highest performing right here. If we look at the portfolio, you can see the top 10 holdings. If we scroll down here, you know, companies that for the most part you've never heard of. Lulu... Lulu, Lemon, Athletica, Digital Realty Trust, we've heard of them, Dexcom, DocuSign, Viva Systems Match Group, uh, Chipotle, there's Chipotle on there, uh, Centene, Splunk, much smaller companies in the mid cap growth fund, um, but this fund is actually beating the S&P 500. It is growth oriented though. If we take a look here at the small cap index funds, we see here that only one of them is actually really beating the S&P 500, and that is the small cap growth index admiral shares, VSG. 
G-A-X. And if you wanted to, you could click in here and see what types of companies are held in this portfolio. Just go and click on Portfolio Management. We can scroll down here. Much smaller companies, Coupa Software, EPAM Systems, Horizon, Teladoc, Zebra, companies that for the most part you've never heard of, they are small and upcoming growth oriented companies. So not a lot of in indexed mutual funds here beating the S&P 500, but if we click out of the indexed mutual fund and we go look at the Vanguard exchange traded funds, we have a lot more options. If we go up here and click on ETFs, and do the same thing, just go ahead and we'll filter out, we'll go by, we got just stocks, international stocks and sector specialty, and we click on year to date. You can see here we've got the mega cap growth ETF, MGK, it's one of the ones that I recommended last time as really kind of blowing past the S&P 500. The mega cap growth ETF is up year to date 23.6% compared to the Vanguard S&P 500, which is only at 4% and change. If we look inside at these, look, and you can see the top like four or five here, mega cap growth, 0.07% expense ratio too, really low. Growth ETF, VUG at 0.04%. Russell 1000 growth at 0.08% expense ratio. These are all three are up almost over 20%, 23.6, 21.46, and 19.73%. And then the S&P 500 growth ETF here, VOOG at 0.10% on their expense ratio. If we look just at the top holding here, the mega cap growth ETF, and we look at their top 10 holdings, give you a little bit of an idea here, it's really, the market is being driven by only a few different companies. For the most part, if we scroll down here, we can see here that the total assets in this fund are only 107. That's it. And if we look, if we scroll down here, we can see Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, which is Google, and Facebook and Tesla. We can click here on the top 10 holdings by weighting, and we see Apple at 13.4%, Microsoft at 11.4%, Amazon at 9.8%, and then Google and Facebook and Tesla having a significant weighting as well. This is a common trend you're going to see in some of these ETFs we look at. So those are the four funds really beating. I mean, yeah, we've got 9.4% here with the ESG US stock ETF. I don't know really who's investing in that one. Um, then we've got the mega cap ETF here, MGC, which is more of a blend between the mega cap growth funds and the mega cap value funds. Even that one there is beating the S&P 500. That's at 8.13% year to date, which is double the S&P 500. And then we get closer with the large cap ETF at VV. And that's got a 0.04% expense ratio. That one's is beating the S&P 500. And then we've got the Russell 1000 ETF as well. And then we're right here at the S&P 500 and the total stock market from an ETF perspective. If we scroll down here, we can look at some of the mid cap funds. We've got one here, only one mid cap fund beating the S&P 500. That's the mid cap growth ETF V as in Victor OT. Expense ratio only expense ratio is only 0.07%, but they are up year to date 11.46%, and the one year is up 24%, which is excellent. We scroll down here to the small cap, and we've only got one fund here again beating the S&P 500, that's the small cap, again, growth ETF, VBK. 0.07% expense ratio and year to date it's up 7.42%. And that's actually what a good portion of my um, Roth IRA with M1 Finance are those four funds. I've got I've got at the S&P 500 for sure, but I've got the mega cap growth fund, I've got the mid cap growth and the small cap growth. If we look here at international stock ETFs, really here nothing is beating the S&P 500. We've got the Dividend Appreciation ETF, which is up 3.19%. Otherwise, most of the international market ETFs are at a loss. We do here, when we look at the sector ETFs there that focus on specific sectors of the economy, we got two specific standouts here, which is not a surprise when you think about the underlying components in these ETFs. We've got the Consumer Discretionary ETF, which is up 25%, and then we've got the Information Technology ETF, which is up 24.35%. And if you take a look here at the underlying holdings in the Consumer Discretionary, you're not gonna be surprised. Click here on Portfolio and management. Scroll down, we see that the top holdings, Amazon, Home Depot, Tesla, McDonald's. And if you look here, the top 10 holdings represent 55% of the total assets. And if you click here on the top 10 with weighting, 
you'll see here that, oh, shut the front door, Amazon, 22% of the weighting in this fund. So no surprise to see that it's outperforming because Amazon's outperforming. And if we come back here and we look at the information technology ETF, which is also outperforming the S&P 500, you're not gonna be surprised when you look at the underlying components. Uh, expense ratio is 0.10%, which is not terrible, but it's not as low as the S&P 500 at 0.03%. But if we click at the portfolio here, we can see here top 10 holdings are ones that you recognize, Apple, Microsoft, Visa. And if we look here, top 10 holdings are 61% of the total assets. Month end, top 10 holdings with weighting, we got Apple at 23% and Microsoft with 16%. Almost 40% of the fund is those two stocks. So definitely some risk there of of underperformance as well if Apple and Microsoft don't do well. So those are the funds that are actually beating the S&P 500. It's definitely growth oriented, really revolving around five to six different companies. We've got you know, Apple, Amazon, Google, uh, Tesla, companies like that that are outperforming and as a result, the funds that hold these at a high weighting are also outperforming. I'm not suggesting that you go in there and buy just these specific funds because you'll also overlap with each other and have a really significant weight again, companies like Apple and Amazon and Google. But in my own portfolio, I am rooted foundationally in the S&P 500. I've got VOO, that ETF. But I also pepper in some of the mega cap growth ETF and the mid cap growth and the small cap growth as well to give myself some balance. Again, this is based on past performance though. So there's no guarantee about what the future holds. There's no guarantee that Apple and Amazon and Google are going to continue outperforming the S&P 500. All we can see is how it has performed in the past and what is currently performing right now. Hopefully you find some value out of this video. I love Vanguard index funds and so hopefully you can take some of the funds from this video and invest in them yourself or potentially even rebalance your portfolio if you like what you see. Make sure to leave your two cents in the comments below. Do you already own these index funds? Do you think I'm missing something? Other types of ETFs or index funds that are outperforming the S&P 500 that don't have massive expense ratios? If so, let me know in the comments below. But that's all I got for you guys today. Have a great rest of your day and please continue during this pandemic to stay healthy both physically and financially. Have a good one.